When it comes to Linux, all the users out there have a different perception of what the perfect distribution is. All the users out there have an opinion on what is bloated or not bloated. And most definitely, all the users out there have an opinion on resource and RAM usage in Linux. What I'm going to talk about today is that all of that is a myth. And I'm going to use a non-mainstream distribution to prove it. That's what we're going to talk about today on eBuzz Central. Before we get started, today's video is being brought to you by the eBuzz Central Store. Are you somebody that loves Linux? Well, this is the place for you. We've got apparel. We've got t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, tank tops, long sleeve tees. You can just click on what you might be interested in. We've got hoodies that are Arch-themed, Debian-based hoodies, channel-based hoodies. And if you go to the next page, we have some pseudo apt get install a live hoodies. You've got just your plain Linux hoodies. Then you've got your Kali inspired. Then we got it. It's okay if you don't like Linux. Not everyone has good taste. We have our new Linux Mint hoodies. We've also got our Ubuntu hoodies that are out now and our Arch hoodies. And then we also have our Manjaro themed hoodies. Now these are all available in t-shirts as well. Tank tops, long sleeve tees. We've also got our bucket hats that have just hit the store. And then we have mugs, water bottles, and steel tumblers and stickers. So... If you love Linux and want to show your pride by wearing it, zip on over to the store and check it out. And if there's something that's not on the store that you would like to see, drop it in the comments below. Now back to the desktop. I presently have the newest release of Kodachi OS, which in no uncertain terms is a security and privacy themed distribution. When I looked at this OS about two months ago, I had users fill up my comments because they got mad when I said this would be a great daily driver for somebody that wants to learn the security and options that you have in Linux. I just got lambasted. Everybody told me I was crazy. I was told it was a bloated mess. Way too much software installed and it was a nightmare. And I tried to answer most of those comments and I tried to be nice about it. Because that's what I'm here for. I think having this discussion back and forth between users is very important for the Linux community. But to just sit there and say that it's a bloated mess is ridiculous. First thing I want to do is go ahead and pull up a terminal and show you something here real quick. I want to make a comparison. Because yes, I am doing this on my Windows 11 machine today because I am going to be showing comparisons. And I can't do that unless I have Windows 11 there. We're going to open up a terminal. So let's drop down here and go to system and we will open up the terminal. Now I'm going to go ahead and see if they have HTOP and they do have HTOP. Okay, let me remind you guys. I have the desktop loaded. I have the conkeys running. At the same time, I have a VPN running in the background and Tor running in the background. At present, I have three gigabytes of memory issued to this machine. We are sitting here at 800 and 50 megabytes of RAM being used. Now, most people would say that's all right, but I do have some of those commenters that would go, man, that is ridiculous. That's way too much RAM to be used. Or, hey, I'm glad it's using the RAM because if you're not using the RAM, it's just wasted RAM. That's the two I get. That's where I have a question. Why is it when we're not using all the RAM that's available, it is a waste, but if you have too many programs on a machine, that's just bloat. Let's do a simple comparison here real quick. We're going to zip over to a Windows 11 desktop. So let me close this. And we are on the Windows 11 desktop. As you can see, the only thing I have running right now is OBS. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go over to the task manager real quick. And we're going to go to performance. Right now, just to have Windows open and running OBS, I'm using 3.3 gigabytes of RAM. Yes, you heard that right, 3.3 gigabytes of RAM. Now, what I do want to show you is that the process of OBS is using 160 megabytes of RAM, okay? So let's take one-tenth of the RAM off. You're using 3.2 gigabytes just to be open. Mind you, no VPN running, no protection of the Tor network running. Viruses can shoot in here or people can track you. Even Microsoft can track you. And you're using 3.2 gigabytes of RAM just to be there. Does that make sense to you all? Please drop it in the comments below if it does because it doesn't to me. 
And next thing I want to go over and discuss is I've already went through here and deleted most of everything that comes when you install a Windows 11 because people say Windows 11 is a bloated nightmare, and it is. There's a reason it's bloated. It's because it comes with Candy Crush, and it comes with all these games out of the box, and it comes with all these programs that have nothing to do with me getting my job done during the day. Now, let's switch back over to the Kodachi desktop. Back on the desktop. Now, a lot of people would look at this main screen right here and go, my God, that's too much. That's bloated. I don't like it. That's your opinion. Somebody out there is going to love this. And at the same time, they're not giving up anything. They're using almost 75% less RAM to run than Windows 11. And they have all of these tools and all of these things that if they want to, they can learn about security on Linux. I recommended this as a daily driver and got just hammered in my comments, okay? And if you go over here and look, you've got all these conkeys giving you all this information. There's your VPN. There's your Tor. Then I had a gentleman point out, I can't even check my email because of the VPN and the Tor. Let me show you something, guys. Go over here, open the Kadashi dashboard. Once it opens up, just go ahead and close it. And if you see over here, the Kadashi dashboard is now on your panel. All you got to do is click on it, go to VPN, disconnect it, go down, go to Tor, disable. Now you can check your email to heart's content. Two clicks of a button. That's all you got to do. It's disabled, you go do what you have to do. People make things way too difficult. As for the simple fact that whenever I do a video on a Debian distribution, my comments fill up, just run Debian, just do this. It's just another distro that's carried by Debian. Well, no, it's not. Like the distro I did yesterday, AV Linux, based on MX Linux. I had people say, just use Debian. I can't. If you guys remember in that video, it has a customized kernel for lower audio latency. You can't get that. Now, if you want to go through the steps to do it, you can, but not everybody out there knows how to do that. So there's distributions out there that take those hard steps out of the way for us so we can use different things. Now, if you're done sending your emails and you want to turn your VPN and Tor back on, guess what? You just come over here, connect your VPN, and then, of course, connect your Tor. You're good to go. And then you come down here. This isn't bloat to me. I've got web browsers right here. I've got a light browser. I've got a loaded browser, G-Hacks browser, proxy chain browser, Tor browser. Guess what? It's not Candy Crush. It's not Crossy Road or whatever that might be. Then you've got security apps. You've got security services. You've got other apps. You've got FileZilla, Thunar File Manager. You open up your file manager right there. There you go. Here's your file manager. Usual suspects over here, you've got your home folders right here. All I'm saying is we have to take a look at the way we approach things. Everybody that uses a distribution or uses an operating system in general uses it for a totally different reason than the other guy. So you can't just jump on somebody and say, hey, if it's not this, it sucks. You can't do that. That's the beauty of Linux, and it's what we don't want to kill. What we got to keep going is people going out there doing things and creating and showing us what they can do with Linux and showing it to everybody. And we don't need to be pounding them in the ground and going, oh, it's just another Arch distro or it's just another Debian distro or this and that and the other. We can't take the creativity away from Linux. Now, yes, you got all these security tools right here. If you come over here, you got your apps. You can go up to accessories. You've got your archive managers, your file managers, your notes, your Redshift, You've got your firewall configurator, double commander, USB guard. You've got your education. You've got graphics, LibreOffice Draw. You've got your internet, FileZilla, transmission, multimedia, Office. You've got your LibreOffice suite out of the box. And then, of course, your system, your Synaptic Package Manager. You can come over here and download all the software that you want. Once it loads up and you can go up here and do a search, you can find any of the applications you want to run on your system. It's not rocket science. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. So I guess in turn, what I'm asking you all today is what's your definition of bloat? What is your definition of resource usage? What is your definition of the perfect distro? Are you open to other distros? Are you open to see things that are created? Are you wanting everybody just to ball it down and stick with either a Debian or an Ubuntu or Manjaro? 
you want to get rid of everything else and only have two or three options. Because with a lot of the comments that I receive, that's what it sounds like. Everybody wants to ball everything up and just have two or three little distros, and that's what we got to live with. And that, to me, defeats the total purpose of Linux. If you disagree with me, please drop it in the comments below. And while you're at it, if you're somebody that wants to learn about security and privacy in Linux, and you want to actually have an operating system that'll help you learn it as you're using it, go download Kadachi OS. I'll put the link in the description below. It's a beautiful operating system. It's a great Linux OS. And even with all this quote unquote bloat, it's lighter on resources and runs better than Windows 11. Please check out the store. Zip on over there. And like I said, if there's something that you want that's not in the store, drop that in the comments below. Also, do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel today. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the content we are creating, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.